In our industry, posting that you're hiring has been, it's kind of an ick. Kind of. It is an ick. It means uh, so hairstylists everyone are like, goes, why? Why are you so desperate to hire? Right. Hi, everyone. I'm Sid Sharice. And I'm David Bosher. And you're listening to Destroy the Hairdresser. Where we teach you to salon differently. After years of searching, we finally found a software that does it all. Introducing Aura Salonware. With Aura, you have the simple tools to streamline your business, such as a card on file, settings for hourly pricing, and even station sharing options. Implement communication boundaries with clients by interacting directly through Aura. Finally, a software that takes your business as seriously as you do. If you're interested in this type of profit maximization, visit aurasalonware.com slash DTH to receive special discounts and promos. As a hairdresser, I know the struggle of managing your back bar, and that's where our friends at SalonScale come to play. While you weigh your products with their app, SalonScale automatically tracks your products used, making inventory management a breeze. Not to mention they also save your formula. They are a digital solution for back bar management, and they really make it easy. You know we're both big on knowing your numbers, and SalonScale does just that. Visit salonscale.com slash DTH and use the code DTH10 at checkout for 10% off your first year. <laughs> me first? You first. Well, we both start, we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, it's the millennial pause. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, probably. Why do or we, the breath. Why do people do that, though? Like, what is what is that? It's me animalistically letting you know that I'm talking. I'm about to say something. My birds do that. And that's that proves my point. Interesting. Um, they make a... Yeah, when they're trying to get my... They, when they're trying to get your attention? Yeah. Because I do it to them. So that's how they <laughs> get my attention. They're like, this how this is how he wants to be communicated. With. I also got my birds a nest. It's been a game changer. Anyways, I'll post about it on Instagram. So today we're talking about people like me, people who have lives. <laughs> we're talking about hiring people with lives. People with birds. Hire people with birds. That have responsibilities. Exactly. You want what I have seen is Forget about what I've seen. Everyone's hiring from schools, mm -hmm. which I already have an issue. I already have an issue with schools. But I can tell you right now that if you hire people from cosmetology schools, you're not going to make any money. Straight out of it. They don't have a book. Yeah. It's just end of story. The that best, doesn't mean you can't hire them. But yes, don't it does. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But also don't expect... <laughs> I, this is the fucked up part. They Hold hire on, them and then... Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I have I'll a get whole to my rant. thing. All right, go. I have a whole thing. Go, go. Do not hire them fresh out of school until you have a full team of like booked that working hairdressers. Then once you're once you have a full team, and by full team I mean every chair is full, even though you can hire beyond that, every chair is full. Now you start hiring people from school because you don't rely on them. That was my problem. I was going to say is that then hairdresser salon owners get bitter at the newbies who are like, I'm just trying, I'm trying. And like, then they say, but there's no one else available because they don't want to recruit, poach, mm -hmm. or headhunt. Mm -hmm. And I don't I know. I can't find someone with a book. We hear that a lot. Yeah, guess where the person with the book is. Yeah, they're fine. They're, they're working. Yeah. You got to reach out to them. Yeah. And what's interesting to me is that when I opened my salon in New York, I only want I want single people that have mm -hmm. kids. I want married people that have kids. I want people that have lots of bills to pay. I want... Responsibilities. Yeah. I yeah. want people to work for me that have lives. And they have... They want to live a, a life outside. They want to travel outside of working at the salon. You know what I mean? Like, I want them to have a whole life. And if you hire people like that, you're going to automatically have people that want to build their business behind the chair. Mm -hmm. Because when you hire someone out of school, they don't have a book. Even if they need to build one, they just don't have one. And if you hire this whole, like, I, all these young kids that live at home and they don't have to pay bills or rent or anything, and then they come and work one day a week and they don't really need to work and they just kind of sit there. And then I have... The salon owners get pissed. The salon owners like, well, they just take up space. It's like, young people don't want to work. And it's like, well, if well, they don't if have they live to... At home, <laughs> Yeah. Then they're just doing this 
because they like the art of it, you know, and that's okay. But also, like, that's not who you should be hiring. That's probably not what you need. Mm-hmm. For and your I, business to thrive. I think if you do live at home, I'm not saying that everyone that lives at home is not Hungry, trying to make yeah. money. But there are a lot of people that live at home that that I, a lot of salons I work with that have people that work for them that live at home. And it just, it doesn't translate yeah. into growth. Yeah. The only time it translates into growth is when their parents are finally like, you have to start paying rent or you have to move out or like... Then they're like, then all of a sudden, I need to work two days. Yeah. I'm putting everything on social media. Yeah, there but have to be... But you know what they be... do? They go work at a restaurant part-time. Yeah. Because again, they didn't put any work in to build anything. So now they have to make quick money. It's it's just a really... It's like a reactive cycle because they're like, yeah, I can make quick money. And they're like, sometimes that is a placeholder. Like when I first came out of school, I was working at a bar. I was working in a bar at night. But the my, green iguana, right? No, that was before hair school. Carmines. Oh, you were still working around. at Carmines. Yeah, I was working at Carmines in Ybor City. And um, they, I would work there at night after my hair job, but my goal was to get, to quit there. I did not want to be a bartender, but it was survival. I had to survive and I did not have the book. Social media wasn't a thing then. Did you live at home? I did not live at home. That's diff- That's my point. Yeah. It's not, it's not that you have another job. It's that you were doing everything you could to build and ending as a, eaten. ending no yourself <laughs> as a, as a waiter was not, yeah that wasn't the goal. I'm like, I didn't pay $30,000 to go to school to work in this bar. Right. But I, I do think that when saloners are looking to hire other people, they kind of just like, you can just see it in their eyes. Like, they're like, I don't know where to start. Yeah. They're like, I don't know. I post on social. Okay, let's talk about that. I actually did a whole TikTok on this this morning while I was waiting for you to get here. And I hear this a lot too. I'm posting that I'm hiring and no one's coming to work for me. You know who else posts they're hiring? Like Walmart, (laughs) Burger King. Yeah. Well, in our industry, posting that you're hiring has been, it's kind of an ick. Kind of. It is an ick. It means uh, so hairstylists everyone are like, goes, why? Why are you so desperate to hire? Right. Why are you so desperate to hire? I'm looking at your your salon page. All I see is hair pictures and that you're hiring. I and don't. I don't want to work for. I don't. I want to work for the salon that doesn't need me. Yes, that's like okay. You're cool. We can take you on. And so I keep. I tell my saloners stop posting that you're hiring. Instead, post what you're offering. Post what makes you different because if you if a hairstylist comes across your salon page or your page as a leader on social media and you're constantly talking about how you offer your team unlimited freedom or limited time off and unlimited, you know, um, schedule freedom and that they can pick their own prices and that, you know, all of these positive offers, right, that, that you don't charge them back bar fees, that your commission is this and all of these things. By the way, those are all posts. So you should be taking notes. Yeah, those are all individual <laughs> posts. And then the stylist is going to go, okay, that's a different offer than the current salon I'm working for. And then who knows, they've probably been miserable at their salon or maybe they're in a suite and they're really struggling. And now they're looking at you and they're like, oh, but if you're constantly posting, I'm hiring. Don't. I, it's like, you might as well throw it up on Craigslist. Okay, Craigslist so. Craigslist even exist anymore? Yeah. <laughs> It does. I've not used it since I moved to New York City. Because hairdressers don't use LinkedIn. My wife said that to me the other day. She's like, why don't your saloners use LinkedIn? I'm like, because hairdressers aren't going to LinkedIn. Well, not saying not. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a hairdresser option. I've never used option. it. <laughs> um, but maybe there is. I don't know. It's like cosmetology. Prof- it's like, some, <laughs> it's not, it's not made for us. Um, Should make one. I know I thought about it. I think Canva Me is the most equivalent to... What's Canva? Oh, yeah, yeah, Canva Canva Me. Me. Canva you? Canva Me. Canva us. (laughs) And now a word from our sponsors. We have partnered with Hair Story, a product line that is good for our clients, our planet, and our bank account. Have you heard of New Wash? It's like a shampoo, but actually good for your hair. New Wash is a cleansing cream that cleans and conditions without the harsh foams and damaging detergents found in traditional shampoos. Hair Story does things differently, creating more conscious options that respect the environment and your hair ecosystem. Ready to try New Wash for free? Visit hairstory.com slash DTH to get pro access today. Okay, I got my first job in New York City. Well, my first job in New York City was Sally Hirschberger, and that was the only reason I moved. Yeah. <laughs> after that, after I got an ulcer and couldn't work for her anymore, 
Um, I went on Greg's list and I literally, I didn't know what else to do because Destroy the Hairdresser didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So there were no like other options. So I went on Craig's list and instead of looking for jobs, I posted what I was looking for. I was like, I'm a hairdresser. I have this many years experience. I've worked for these people. Here's my website. I am not interested in like joining a team. I just need to like work somewhere and I'll commission and all these things. And I posted. And what's funny is the trolls existed then as well. Because I would get a lot of messages from salon owners telling me that no one would ever hire me because of my request. Like Mm -hmm. basically what I would and would not do. And I got hired. You did. Yep. And someone was like, that's my person. Yeah. Yeah. I got hired. And I mean, that was a nightmare of a of its own, but <laughs> Craigslist for different reasons. You excel. You exceed or uh, had success there. Yeah, I mean, Craigslist was. I would never look for someone. I would never, as a hairdresser, get a job with someone who was like on Indeed or Craig. Like I wouldn't. I wouldn't even look there. I We're all looking on right. social media. Let's be real. But I know that people are looking there, and so I feel confident enough to, if I were to post me as a hairdresser. Well, you that, just gave me such a good idea. That I'm that I'm confident about. What if, like, why are hairdressers not doing that on social media? Like, Instagram and TikTok? Like, what if you made a reel? They're terrified. And you say, my name is so-and-so. I live in this city. I want to charge this. I have this kind of clientele. They're going to get fired. I specialize in this. So what? <laughs> I, well, I'm saying, like, let's say they're an independent. Like, Oh, yeah. But, but can you imagine putting that out there? Like, if you're a hairstylist and you're looking for a new career opportunity, you should try that and see how many salons locally start going right to you and are like... Oh, these, yeah. these independent... Or what if you sent a video like that to a salon? These independent girlies out there, which are also boys. Mm-hmm. Girlies is everyone. Yeah. I'm going to... It's like, hey, guys. Yeah, I'm using girlies and I really don't care. Term. Anyone hates it. But all the salon suite girlies out there don't realize how much power they hold. So much. Everybody I mean, wants to hire you. Everyone wants to hire you and get you out of that suite. You could have any job in the world. <laughs> and instead if, you're like, how do I make more money in my suite? I know. I'm like, it's you like, could literally have any You job should go work at a commission salon and just ask for whatever you want. I mean, you can want. you imagine as a salon owner, if you got a video from a stylist that was like, this is what I want to charge. This is what I'm looking for in a business. This is what the A, B, and C. Like, you'd probably be so, like... You'd be like, yeah. I mean, that's what we did in New York. We walked into multiple salons and said, this is how many days I can work. This is what I want to charge. This is what I want to make. Let this me, is my I social wanna, media following. And this is... And we got hired. There's some caveats, right? Yeah. If you're like, I want to make 60% commit... No. Stay in your suite, boo. Yeah, the answer is no. <laughs> but also, you're not going to make 60% in your suite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't. Uh, they go, I make 100%. Mm-mm. <laughs> so, if... When I was... Like Sid said, we were going around saying, oh, I want to work for you. This is what I'm looking for. The things that I that we were looking for are the methods that we talk about. Mm-hmm. I was looking for unlimited freedom. I wanted to set my own price point. I wanted to charge by the... I wanted like things that I, I didn't feel... Excuse me. I didn't feel they were too crazy. But I was also really respectful of their business. And I it was, was also okay for them to say no. It was okay for them to say no. It was okay to negotiate to the point that some things that worked for them. So, for example, if they were like, no, we need you to work nine to five, I'd be like, no, I, no, I, can't. I can't do that. Um, but one thing that I did do, I never negotiated. I wanted commission because I didn't want to rent anything. Yeah. So, I said, I'll just take whatever commission you give everyone else because I, I wasn't going to try to negotiate higher than everyone else. Uh, I was just... I was like, I just need all these freedoms and I'll just take the same commission the rest of the team has. So at when you, this price point. At this price. But I need to be able to control my price point, yep. right? So if you're out there and you're taking this advice and you're like, oh, I'm going to put myself out there and say this and, you know, this is what I'm looking for. It's not you just going hard. Like, I want 60% commission and I it's want this. Yeah, you're saying this is what I need. And then there are some things that you're going to have to let go of. Mm-hmm. Like... Any salon owner out there that's giving over 50% is idiotic. Yeah. And that should be a red flag. If you walk into a salon and they're like, oh, we give 52% commission, they're probably hitting you with every fee possible. So you're really actually making like 40% or lower. Or they're not, and Mm -hmm. they're not profiting, and those doors will close. Absolutely. But I do, like, I think hairdressers, again, I'm telling all, we're telling all these salon suite people, like, 
you have a lot of power right now, what you do, but like that doesn't mean go and like destroy everyone else's business. Mm -hmm. It means understand that commission's commission, but what you do need is certain freedoms. Yeah. Right. And with DTH salons, which I don't know, I don't think people know that we have a salon directory. Yeah. We have an entire salon directory. You can go to destroy. And what that means is they are vetted in our program. They have a coach. They're implementing our methods. It's funny. People are like, uh, they're like, are these all the salons? I'm like, no, there's actually hundreds more, but hundreds they're, not, of salons. they're not hitting all the methods. So we can't approve them on the directory. And yet. they're not in coaching. Yeah. So the rule is if you're on our directory, you're, you have a coach. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you leave coaching, you're off the directory. And we do that, like Sid said, that is so we can control some quality there. But go to destroythehairdresser.com slash salon directory and look at like all the salons around the world. Um, we're really big in Belgium right now. I know. I don't know what's going and on. And Australia. And Australia always. Um, but like look at those salons. And because we have open door policies, work at all of them. Yeah. A Travel lot of, around. We've talked about this before, but we'll ha- we'll have a lot of salons in one area and they share stylists, which yep. is really cool. And then you'll have that one person who doesn't want to share anybody. Mm-hmm. And then everybody just leaves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. We have we have a lot of people, a lot of, um, how would you, you know how you have friend and enemy and it's frenemy? What's yeah. a fan enemy? A fan enemy? Stalker. A uh, troll? Yeah. <laughs> but, what's, but it's like a fan troll. A froll. A froll. <laughs> Or a trans. I thought too long no, about trans, that. That doesn't work. <laughs> a frill. A frill. No, but the idea is like that we have these people that follow us. They like they're like I love ninety eight percent of what you do, yeah. but I'm never yeah gonna do unlimited time off. I'm never gonna give that them. will never work. I had someone on TikTok say, "Well, what happens if your if what if my stylists just don't come in at all?" I'm like, "Fire them." Yeah, I'm like. Why is the question, how do I make sure people come into work? The reality is if they're sick, they need the day off, they're going on vacation, you're not going to say, hey, you need to make it up or mm, you can only have one Saturday off a month. Like, that's the idea. That's like, um, my husband cheats on me. What should I be doing? You know. Um, you should leave. Leave. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> but no, they'll go to counseling and the counselor will tell them they should get divorced and they'll stop to getting counseled. It's a whole thing. But this is like, it's... I make that comparison because the same fucking thing. Like, well, if I do that, then they won't do this. And it's like, you shouldn't have to do that. So they do this. Yeah. But yeah. I think everyone, salon owners, hairstylists, like every person when you're going into a job situation, that's business 101. Negotiation is absolutely allowed. Communication. And it's also okay to, don't get mad at the person because they can't meet your, your, your wishes. Just say, you're not the right business for me and walk off. Find another one. Yeah. And or if you're a business your owner... <laughs> And you can't give the person what they want, which this is this is funny to me too. Like, well, I really wanted to hire them, but they wanted, you know, I give 48% and they really wanted 50. And so I might just do it. No. No. Stay true. It's your business. Yeah. It, you can let someone go. Mm-hmm. You can say no to someone. You They can think about it. They can come back a year later. It's everything in this industry is just very like. Just say no. Just say no. next time on Destroy the Hairdresser, the podcast. I've actually talked to a lot of salon owners where they're like, I'm going to offer this. And I'm like, you're barely surviving. You cannot pay for health insurance right now. Mm